Okay, hi everybody. Today I want to answer the second most common question I get on my YouTube channel, which is what IDE do you use? Um, the most common question I get is why doesn't my code work? Uh, but today we're going to talk about the IDE that I use. Uh, now, if you've seen my videos or see my tutorials, you'll actually notice that I use a number of different IDEs depending on when I made the video. Um, so if you don't want to watch this whole video, the short answer to your question is right now I use Genie and you can find that at genie.org. I will put a link down below. Uh, but if you watch the video, I'll talk about uh, why I switched to Genie later in the video. Um, but let's start with the first IDE I used in Python, uh, which was idle. And I have a little window open to show you what it looks like. Um, so this is what idle looks like. It comes with Python, so you don't have to install it separately, which is really, really nice. Um, it has you know, some bare bone features. It's not really super capable of doing a lot of different things, at least not that I've found. And, uh, but one thing it does have, uh, it does have some nice uh, themes. You can change the highlighting and uh, different things like that. There are some things that you can do with it. But if you just notice how slow it is and that updating, that really bothers me. Um, so yeah, I just kind of didn't really stick with that very long. Um, and also, now if you watch, if I run this program, and this is a, a chess thingy that I'm working on. If I go ahead and run this and just watch, it pops up and watch how slow that is. It's, it's torturously slow. I don't know if that can be fixed. Um, I, I have no idea. Uh, I just didn't really play around with it long enough to try and figure it out. Okay, so that is idle. Again, that comes with Python and you can find information about that in the Python docs. Uh, so I'm going to switch to my next one. Uh, after idle, uh, I found something called uh, Text Wrangler. Now I teach at a school and uh, everybody at our school has a Macintosh, uh, Mac OS X. So I found software that worked on Mac OS X. And what I found was something called Text Wrangler. Now Text Wrangler has been discontinued and it's been updated to, by the same company called BB Edit. And BB Edit is a pretty cool program. It has a lot of really cool features, not just for Python, but also for uh, doing HTML, CSS, things like that. You can do multiple languages in BB Edit. You cannot go wrong. This is a great little program. It has a lot of nice features. When you first download it, you get the free 30-day trial, which has more features and some you know nice things for people to use. Um, since I don't want to pay for it, or my students certainly don't want to pay for it, we usually just use the basic features. Um, I can hit Command R and it will run. Now watch how fast that rendered uh, versus what we saw with Idle. And you just see it's it's just so much faster. Um, yeah, it really makes a huge difference. So C7 to C5, and you can play a little chess game there. So yeah, BB Edit is not a bad choice uh, if you are on a Mac. To get that, you can go to their website. I'll put the link down below, barebones.com products.bbedit, and you'll see over here free download, and it downloads directly. One thing to keep in mind is Apple being Apple and their infinite wisdom, they enjoy changing their operating system often and breaking compatibility with previous apps. So you might have some issues there depending on what version of Mac OS X you are on. So anyway, I got tired of BB Edit, and I wanted something a little more powerful. So I went to Visual Studio Code. This is a free piece of software from Microsoft, and to be honest, it's pretty amazing. It has an amazing set of plugins. It really can do almost anything. Setting it up's a little bit tricky the first time you run it. You'll see things like linter pylint isn't installed. It kind of tells you, just go ahead and install it. Do you want to use the Microsoft Python language server preview, blah, 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 blah. I'm just going to click later. I really personally just do not like Microsoft. I've never trusted them. I am personally a Linux user. I use Mac because that's what my, my job provides to me. So I use it because of that reason. But in my personal life, I use Linux. I just don't trust Microsoft. I don't care for Apple. But um, I understand that people do like those systems and they have very good reasons for doing so. So I kind of stepped away from Visual Studio Code because it doesn't have anything that I personally need, especially as a teacher of beginners. 
I, I think a simpler system that doesn't do quite as much hand holding. Visual Studio Code does amazing, amazing work with uh, IntelliSense and code completion. But I like my students, to, at least to, when they're first starting out, to do those things themselves, to, to learn the basics uh, and to maybe you know, in one way to learn it the hard way and not rely so much on the, uh, the editor to do that work for you. So, but anyway, if you like it, and I, I, I think it's a great piece of software, it's really powerful. It does work on Mac, it works on Windows, and it does work on Linux. So thank you, Microsoft, for that. I do appreciate that, considering uh, Linux as a full-fledged platform. So you can come to this website, code.visualstudio.com. Again, I'll put the link below. Download it and play around with it. You can see here just a small uh, sample of the range of what this software can do. It's, it's really impressive, actually. And you can see here the IntelliSense and, and the dropdowns and what it does. So again, you can't go wrong with this. It's really good software. Again, I just have a personal preference to not use Microsoft products. Which brings me back to what I'm using now, which is Genie. And it is the Flyweight IDE. One thing I really like about this software is that it is fast. It's not a huge download. You notice here it runs on Linux, it runs on Windows, it runs on Mac OS. And it's open source, so if you were a coder, you could download it and you could update it and make changes to it however you wanted. And I, I like to support open source software. I like to let my students know that open source software exists and they are not beholden to large corporations for their software. Uh, I think it's important for young people to realize that. And it looks a little bit like, oops, it looks a little bit like this. And it runs just like you know all the other software does. Here's my chess games. It's running here. So C2 to C4. And I moved my pawn. Very exciting. And this is hopefully going to come up in a future tutorial. One of the things I really like about this is by default you have this uh, sidebar here. And it basically tells you where certain things are. So especially beginners, once your code starts to get longer, they can get lost. OK, where was that? You know, well, where did I put that? But it actually just tells you here. So here is the board class that's in this program, uh, the init method, and it's on line 16. It tells you, and there's a nice little arrow. Here are the functions that are in the program so far. Here are the variables. So the first time board appears as a variable is on line 104. You can see how it just it just has all the different appearances of those values. It has the imports. So I imported OS on line one. And yeah, again, I just I just really like this. It does have different themes. This is the Bespin theme, and you can change, of course, change the fonts and all that sort of thing. There's a nice little terminal, integrated terminal down here. And again, Visual Studio Code has this as well. BB Edit doesn't, and Idle doesn't, but uh, those these two programs do. Genie is just super fast, as, as you can see. Very, very lightweight. And uh, I just really enjoy uh, using this piece of software and supporting open source. The only little catch you might have with this is, uh, you can't see the menu up here, but it says build. And you'll see set build commands. And when you save a Python file, it automatically comes up with these build commands. On my computer, it started out like Python like that. And it defaulted to Python 2. So I did have to come in here and edit this so that it would default to Python 3 for me. So just where it said Python, change it to Python 3. Where it said Python, again, Python 3, no space, uh, if you look closely there. And just click OK. And this also works. Uh, I've used this with C. I've used this with Java. It does all kinds of different programming languages. It's really a, an amazing piece of software, considering that it is free and, as I mentioned, open source. So the answer to your question, for those of you who want to know what IDE I use, the answer is Genie. Now, there are plenty of others. There's Eclipse, which is a big piece of software. Um, it's very slow, on, at least on a lot of computers I've used it on. It's very, it's much more complicated and complex for beginners to get set up. So I find that Genie is, is a nice balance between speed, uh, lightweight, and has just enough features to make programming easy enough, but not too complex that beginners find it uh, to be a challenge uh, getting started. So yeah, so that's the answer. So to all of you who wanted to know what I use, here is the answer. Take a look down below, um, and I'll have some links. You can try them out, see which one you like. The most important thing is to use whatever you're comfortable with and not to worry about what I use. You got to use whatever you like. And uh, yeah, so keep on coding. And if you like what you see, subscribe and uh, so keep posted for updates. 
You guys have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.